Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to discuss five common misconceptions about police officers. Uh, before I get into that, I wanna talk about the definition of the word misconception is wrong or an accurate idea. I would also like to define misinformation, which is incorrect or misleading information. And disinformation is defined as false information deliberately and often covertly spread such as rumors or incorrect information in order to influence public opinion or obscure the truth. With that said, let me get into my topic. Now I want to preface before I want to before I get into this that I was a police officer in the 80s, 90s and the 2000s. I did the job. So I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. I'm not giving you my experiences on what someone told me or what the media tells me. I'm giving you experiences on what actually happened. First misconception, police officers are racist. First of all, I'm gonna talk a little bit about LAPD. They're the most diverse police agency in the country. Now I'm talking about LAPD because that's where I worked. So my expertise on that is best brought to you from that perspective. LAPD hires to reflect the community. So whatever the percentage is in the community, that's what the police are. So let's say it's 40% black, 30% Hispanic, whatever the uh, percentages are, that's how they hire. So they've got a certain percentage of police officers that reflect the community. Another thing about what people don't understand is when you get in the car, you start your watch, you and your partner get in your car, you get all your equipment, you get in, you log in your computer, you hit your clear button, you get on the radio and say clear, whatever unit you're working. And then what happens is dispatch either sends you lower priority cases over the computer or the code two and higher cases, which are like the important calls, life or death, things like that, they broadcast over the air. So I used to always tell people, I don't base anything I do off race because of the computers telling me where I go and when I get there, I'm dealing with the color of person that the radio calls directed me to. I'm not sitting in my car going, okay, let me see if I can go uh, find me a black person to harass or a Hispanic person to harass or a white person to harass. I go where the computer tells me to go. I go where the radio tells me to go. We don't have any control of where we're going. I used to get to calls and say, listen, I don't wanna be here. I was called here, I have to be here. Now let me get to the bottom of what's going on here so I can either rectify it and I can leave and you can get on with your, your day. But to assume that police officers are racist and are targeting people, now I know we don't live in a perfect world. And I know that, and I know there's bad in everything, but the bad is very, very small. And people just don't understand that. Police just wanna make it home to their families. We don't care what color you are. All we care about is, are you safe and are we safe? That's it. And you wanna make sure your partner gets home to his family and he's making sure I get home to mine. And that's all that matters. So imagine this, we all have jobs, we all do different things, you're an electrician, you're a carpenter, you're a plumber, whatever it is you do. Imagine going to work and if you make a wrong decision, which we all do, everyone's done it, but if you make a wrong decision in this job, you either die or they send you to prison. And you have to make that decision in a split second. All the decisions police officers make are based on a threat, not a color of someone's skin. Now the media is not gonna tell you that. The media is gonna take shootings and they're gonna throw things at you and go, oh, a white officer shot a, a black youth today and they'll put his little league pitcher up and say what a great person he was and, and I'm not saying all shootings are good, but what I am saying is that police officers go out every day, react to the places that they're dictated to go by either a radio call or the computer, and then they get there and whatever color you are, that's what color you are. They don't care. I certainly didn't care. Now I'm black and Italian, so if, I stopped a Hispanic person. I wasn't stopping them because they're Hispanic. If I stopped a white person, I'm not stopping them because he's white. If I stopped a black person, I'm not stopping them because he's black. Or I'm not dealing with them because of the color of their skin. I'm dealing with them because of the information I got. 
and I base all my decisions and what I, who I'm talking to based on the information I get from the computer. Now, all the things I'm telling you here, the media is not gonna tell you. So to assume that all police officers are racist is just ridiculous because we are told where to go. So if someone calls 911 and they say a male black with a gun is walking southbound and he's wearing a white t-shirt and blue jeans and I see him, I'm not stopping him because he's black. I'm stopping him because of the information I got on the computer and there he is. So I have to react to that. If they, he's a white guy with a blue t-shirt and black pants, well, that's the guy I'm stopping. Has nothing to do with color. And to assume that police officers are running around trying to just stop people of color and harass them is just ridiculous. First of all, you're too busy to do that. You're just reacting off of the phone calls. Okay, we're gonna go to number two, misconception. Most traffic stops are based on race. Now, every time I hear this, you know, people, police officers are pulling over people of color and harassing them. Well, well <laughs> let me give you a little clue about things. When we're behind you, we don't know what you look like. We haven't approached the car yet. We're making traffic stops on vehicle code violations we see. That's why we make the stop. We don't know what color you are. 99% of the time when I pull people over, I never knew what color they were until I walked up on the car. So when I walk up on the car and someone says, hey man, why are you pulling me over, blah, 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 I, I dealt with that. But it had nothing to do with the color of a person's skin. Now here's something a lot of people don't know. If there's a lot of traffic accidents in a certain area, let's say there's an intersection, and they're getting called, they're getting a lot of traffic accidents at a certain location, they will ask us, hey, go out there and write some tickets on certain violations that are causing the accidents. Now that's just to reduce the amount of traffic collisions that occur in a certain area, which then reduces in injuries to people. That's how it's done. We, and another reason why police officers stop people is sometimes there'll be a crime that comes out. And they'll say, hey, there's a, uh, a blue Dodge heading southbound. Uh, suspects of male black, a robbery just occurred. So you're driving down the street and you see that vehicle and you pull them over. So you're stopping that vehicle and the information you got from a crime broadcast on something that happened. That's why people are pulled over. It's not based on color. Well, here's the other thing too. If I didn't pull that car over and they robbed you, You'd be the first one to say, ah, look at the police, they're not doing their job yet. But then when I pull over that person, they go, oh, those cops are racist, man. You pulled them over for no reason. Can't win. You can't win for losing here, but you got to do your job. If you're the victim of a crime, you want me pulling that car over. You want us to do our job. But when it comes out bad or some the news media puts a spin on things, then all of a sudden, oh, oh, all the cops are bad. I will tell you, Police officers stop people for vehicle code violations and to reduce traffic collisions in certain areas. They don't stop you because of the color of your skin. They don't even know what you look like prior to stopping you. Third misconception of police officers, the use of lethal force on minorities. Now, that's a big topic here. I mean, the news media puts a spin on this and the numbers are skewed and I'm gonna tell you why. If you work in a high crime area, there'll be more uses of force in that neighborhood. If you're a cop in Beverly Hills, probably not a lot of crime there. But if you're a cop in South Central, some of the high crime areas, you're going to have more uses of force because there is more crime. That's not a color thing, it's a crime thing. It's a societal problem that the police are reacting to. And then when something bad happens, they go, oh, look at the police. Look at what the police are doing. Oh my gosh. Well, the problem is bigger than the police. The police are just responding to a societal problem that has manifested itself into crime. And unfortunately, the high crime areas are more in black and brown areas. Cops don't have any control over that. We are just reacting to the problem of society. It's not a color thing. It's a high crime thing. Here's the other issue. Here's the deal. Fathers, you have to raise your children. 
If your kid is leaving the, the house with a gun in their waistband and the police stop them and unfortunately they have to shoot them, that is not a police problem. That is a fatherhood problem. That is a parent problem. Parents need to do a better job of raising their children so they don't become a police problem because when they become a police problem, everyone wants to blame the police. It's not the police. It's the parents. Raise your kids. Make sure you know where they are at night. Make sure they're not running around with a gun in their waistband. Listen, I'm just going to say this. Over 70% of black kids don't have a father in the house. And the stats on that, they're justified in every stat you can actually see. Now, if the father's not in the home, I think you're something like 20% more likely to go to prison. You're, you got seven, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teenager if you're a female, if you don't have a father. Those are the problems. We want to talk about, well, let's take the money from the police. Oh, the police need better training. No, parents, you need better training. You need better training. Your kid's out there committing crimes, and then when the police officers tell him to do something, he refuses, fights the police, he ends up getting shot, and we want to yell at the police officer. What's he supposed to do? Your child is the problem. Your child caused the police to be called on them. Now, I'm just saying, if you raise your children better, we don't have the problem. Because as a police officer, when I had contact with a you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 year old, still living at home with his mommy and daddy, or his mommy, his daddy ain't around, that problem ended with me. It didn't start with me. And then the parents would say, why are you arresting my son? Why are you arresting my son? Well, I don't know, because you just robbed a liquor store. That's why I arrested your son. And what was he doing leaving the house with a gun that you know nothing about? That's a parent problem. It's not a cop problem. But we don't want to talk about that because then people would actually have to do something. You know, how can we get better as a people if we can't even raise our kids? We got to quit making our kids a police problem. And I'm talking about when the kid initiates that 911 call. When he pulls a gun on somebody and call, people call 911. Here's the other thing. You know, they always talk about these police shootings where these kids are getting shot or young male blacks are getting shot or whatever color the person is. Here's the deal. If you get stopped by the police, don't fight the police because when you do, nothing good's going to happen. I'm not saying that all police are right all the time. Use the courts to correct the wrong. Don't try to fight the police officer on the street because it's not going to turn out good. It's a lot easier, it's a lot easier to raise a child than to correct a man. So when you get them when they're this big, do your job, fathers, so that the police don't have to deal with them. Here's the thing the media is not going to tell you about. Police have millions of contacts every year with citizen, citizens with no incident. Every year, millions of people have contact with police, not one incident. You don't hear a word about it. But the minute there's a shooting and it's black on white or white on black or whatever the color they want to throw out there at you. And guess what? Now it's a terrible thing. All oh, these police, man, we got to take their money from them. We better make sure we get them better training. I'm telling you, we are going into a situation where people aren't going to want to be police officers anymore. And that's going to be a problem. Listen, more unarmed white people are shot by police each year compared to black people. Where's the media coverage on that? It doesn't exist. It's gone. Fourth misconception. Police have quotas. Now, I'm going to talk for LAPD because I've never worked for any other police agency. LAPD does not have quotas to write tickets or anything like that. It's part of your job to write tickets to reduce traffic accidents. And just like it's your job, if I don't write any tickets, my supervisor's looking at me and he's going, yeah, I guess you're not doing your job. Well, sure, you write tickets but you more write tickets to show your supervisors that you're doing your job and to reduce traffic accidents. That's it. There's no, oh, I've got to write you a ticket because I got to write 10 today. That does not exist. When I was a police officer, I hardly wrote tickets. If I stopped somebody, I warned them 99% of the time, you know, and then maybe while you're warning them on that, you run them for something and maybe they've got a felony warrant and you get to solve something. And if they don't have anything, you just tell them to have a nice day, give them their driver's license back and say, great, you take care. 
So the quota thing is just a total misconception that does not exist. The fifth misconception about police officers, people become police officers for power and control. Now listen, I'm not saying that all police officers are perfect. I'm not saying that all police officers do everything right. But the police officers that I knew and that I've worked with just had a sincere desire to help people. And that was it. When a police officer dies in the line of duty, it's the ultimate price to protect others. Remember, when everybody else is running away, they're running to it. It's not about power and control. It's about giving a little something back to the community. Little something back where you're able to go to work every day and make a little bit of difference. And you know what? It's a big monster out there and you're just one person. But who knows? Maybe you touch a life. I mean, maybe you say hi to a little kid and, you know, you get him right and he grows up and he doesn't go to prison or get shot on the streets. And maybe it was because just a little something you said to him that day. So those are the five misconceptions about police officers. Now, listen, I understand we live in an environment. The environment that we live in today is not friendly to police officers. But listen to this. The next time you call 911, imagine that there's nobody there to answer your call. You're on your own. No help, nothing. No ambulance, no sirens coming. You are just on your own. Now think about that for a second. Someone's breaking in your house. You call 911, nobody answers. Somebody in your family shot, injured, you know, hurt really bad. You need an ambulance. You call, nobody's there. People better start thinking about the necessities of these people in these positions to help us. You know, it says in the Bible, blessed are the peacemakers. And I think he knew what he was talking about. I really like to hear your comments on this video. So please leave your comments. I, I want to go ahead and look at those and kind of see what the perspective is of people listening to my video. Um, thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. My name is David Watson with Watson PI Services, helping people navigate through difficult circumstances.